Good morning and happy Easter. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be with the people of God. If you're a first time visitor with us or haven't been here in a while, just let me be the first to welcome you and say uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for worshiping with us. Uh, for those on online or online crowd on Facebook and YouTube, we welcome you as well. And thank you for worshiping with us. And that's really it today. That's the focus is worship. Uh, today we celebrate, I was talking with the choir this morning, today we celebrate the resurrection of the living God, Jesus Christ. And uh, if there's any day to worship, it's today. If there's any time to worship, it's right now. So let's not hold back. Let's stand to our feet if you're so able, and let's worship the Lord this morning. Thank 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead.
Let's just lift it to heaven this morning. Jesus. Sing it out. Jesus. Jesus. There's just something about that name. We call you Master.
is the word of God. Moments, and I'll try to make it uh, not take advantage of your time, but uh, 
Uh, I want to speak to you on the, 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 the three dimensions of, of this uh, Jesus resurrection. Uh, it's, it's a, it, the resurrection in 3D, if you will. Now, I don't know that there's anybody in this auditorium that remembers it from the days gone by and the years gone by, but uh, how many of you saw, uh, grew up with black and white TV? Can you just raise a hand? All right, I know how old you, old you are. And then uh, uh, some of you just remember color TV, right? It's color TV, and then, and then there, there came out uh, movies and what have you in 3D. And so uh, every time it changes, there's something uh, spectacular. I remember the first time I, I ever experienced 3D, we were, I think, at Universal Studios. I'm not sure that that's, that's where it was, but uh, they gave us glasses and we came in. And I, I remember thinking to myself, this is long before COVID. I wonder if I'll get an eye infection out of this. But that was my first thought that came to mind. And everybody was putting those glasses on and throwing them in a bucket on the way out. And, and then they put us in these seats. And, uh, and it, was a, it was kind of a dragon, a looking thing. And you could see this dragon, and it would whip its tail and get close to you. And, and then, and then it, you were kind of in this seat, and, uh, and, 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 and then it would breathe fire. And they had, a, they had a, like little uh, uh, heaters on it, like a blow dryer. And when that, when that dragon uh, blew fire, it came right at you. And it, and it absolutely uh, warmed you up. And then it had a, it was almost like the dragon was drooling. It had a little mist that, that sprayed on you. And it was really cooling. At the time it missed my middle son, Eric, he screamed like a little girl. He, I mean, it was pretty. Now, that, that, that's hyperbole. But that's a, the beauty of being a dad and your kids becoming adults. You finally get back at some point in your life. But it is just an experience change totally, going from, going from black and white and, and, and moves forward. The Easter story is similar to that concept as well. Is that, that, for, that, that the first dimension is the proof, and we'll go through it just for a, a few moments this morning. It's the proof that Jesus is a resurrected Savior. It's, it's, it's the first dimension is the evidence of the resurrection. The second dimension is the promise of the resurrection, that, that, it's, a, that it's, a, it's the expectation that you and I will be resurrected as well. The third dimension is the power. Now, if you're following in the back of your bulletin, I'll get to it in just a few minutes. You'll, you'll get there. So if you're OCD, just kind of relax. But we'll, we'll get there in a minute. The third is the power or the experience of the resurrection. The first dimension of the resurrection, the proof, is, it is, a, is, a, is in our past. It's a matter of record. It's a matter of, uh, of, of, uh, of the, the world knows. That this morning, this morning, you and I are worshiping here on Easter Sunday morning, and there will be 2.4 million. I think I read this week, 2.4 million. I read 2.3 something million. But over a, a billion, I'm sorry, 2.4 billion, a third of the earth worships Jesus Christ as a resurrected Savior this morning. You know, the, the Christianity comes in all kinds of, of, of uh, different religions or denominations, I should say. But we all believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this morning, there's a, there's a oh, 2.4 billion with the B worshiping the, the risen Savior. That's, that, that's a reminder that, that, uh, that, that, is, that has happened in the past. The second dimension is it will happen in the future. That one of these days that you and I are going to be resurrected. We had a, a, a tragedy or a death in the, on the district last week. And uh, the parents and, uh, and Dorothea Hogg passed away and her funeral well, was yesterday. And I think that the committal is this afternoon. But I thought to myself, what a wonderful weekend to, to have a funeral service knowing that it's the resurrection that you and I will, will, will uh, have been promised the, the resurrection. But the third dimension is, is the, the, that it can happen every day in our lives. That the resurrection of Jesus Christ works in our lives daily. Many people acknowledge the, 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 the proof, the first part, the first dimension of the resurrection. You're still in the black and white. You're still in, in the early stages. Some accept the promise of the resurrection. You believe that Jesus Christ is the resurrected Savior and that you'll be resurrected on Resurrection Sunday. And, but few access his power. Few live in his power. And so just for a few moments this morning, let's address them quickly. 
First, there is the proof that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, I'm going to use a lot of scripture here, but I want you to catch it just for a few minutes. These are the facts, the black and white, the evidence of that Jesus is the Son of God, the resurrected Savior. Jesus, number one, repeatedly claimed that he was the Son of God. We know him as the incarnate Christ, God with us. So, so I don't want to get into a ton of theology, but we understand that the birth of Jesus, that Jesus was, that, that Mary was conceived of the Holy Spirit. And that when Jesus came, he was 100% God and 100% man. Jesus made that claim that he indeed was the Christ, the promised Messiah. Jesus claimed that his resurrection would prove his identity, that there's, there's no other way to prove your identity or to prove that you're the, the Messiah, the promised Messiah, other than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so let me give you some of his public claims as Jesus uh, gave his claims. And first of all, he started with metaphors. And then as he got closer to the death, burial, and resurrection, he was a little more poignant. Listen to what he says in Matthew chapter 12. Verse 39 and 40, just as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and nights, so I'll be in the heart of the earth for three days and nights. John chapter 9, verse 19 and 22, these are the claims of Jesus. Destroy this temple and I'll raise it again in three days. They replied, it took 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his own body. Again, it's a reminder that Jesus himself claimed to be the Son of God. Matthew chapter 17, verse 22 and 23, Jesus told them, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed. He will be killed. But three days later, he will be raised from the dead. And the disciples' hearts were filled with grief. Why were they filled with grief? Because they didn't understand that's what Jesus was trying to speak to them. Let's go on to the scripture just a little farther. Matthew chapter 20, verse 18 and 19. And when we get to Jerusalem, Jesus said, The Son of Man will be betrayed to the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. They will sentence him to die. Then they will hand him over to the Romans to be mocked, whipped, and crucified. But on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. On the third day, he will be raised from the dead. So Jesus, as he speaks to his disciples, he reminds them that the proof that he is the Messiah, the Son of God, is, is the resurrection itself. And Jesus begins to explain to his, to his disciples that, that he would die, be crucified, and, and be raised again. So the proof in the resurrection it is, is uh, the proof that Jesus is the Son of God is the resurrection. Let's hasten on just a little farther. Matthew chapter 27, verses 62 to 66. The next day, the leading priests and Pharisees went to see Pilate the governor. They told him, Sir, we remember that the deceiver once said, while he was still alive, after three days, I'll be raised from the dead. So we request that you seal the tomb until the third day. Not as only Jesus did speaking to his disciples. But the Romans get it. Those in public get it. They know the claims of Jesus himself. This will prevent the disciples from coming and stealing his body and then telling everyone he came back to life. If that happens, we'll be worse off than we were at first, Pilate replied. Take guards and secure it the best that you can. So they sealed the tomb and posted guards to protect him. Jesus had made the claim so often that he was going to die and be resurrected that the Romans knew to post guards at his tomb. Did Jesus keep his word? Listen to what he says in Acts chapter 1 verse 3. For 40 days after his death, Jesus appeared to people many times in many ways that proved beyond doubt that he was alive. They saw him and they talked with him about the kingdom of God. You know, I suspect.
respect that you have any age on you at all this morning, life has not always gone like you planned it to go. You probably went to college and, and thought to yourself, I'll, I'll get a, a good job and I'll sit behind the computer and, and uh, I'll kind of I'll kind of direct traffic and, and I'll, I'll kind of do my own thing and I'll make $150,000 in the process. I mean, you have expectations in the life, some of which have not happened. You thought that, that your relationships would be the same, that everything would go well, that you're physically would be okay. You had expectations about life itself, but the one thing I've learned in life is that it, that it doesn't always go like we think it's going to go. But when Jesus said that, that, that you'll be resurrected, when Jesus said that it would prove, when Jesus said that he was the Christ, the Son of God, he was telling the truth. Listen to what he says in First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 to 8. Christ died for our sins. Just as the scripture said, he was buried and then he was raised from the dead on the third day. He was seen by Peter and then by the twelve apostles. And after that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time. Most of whom are still alive, though some have died by now. Then he was seen by James and later by all the disciples. And Paul writes, and Paul writes, last of all, I saw him. Paul understands the power of the resurrection. We also know that Jesus met with Mary Magdalene. He met with a group of women. Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. He met with Peter that afternoon. afternoon. Uh, Luke chapter 24 to 34. He, he, he met with the two guys on the road to Emmaus. Mark chapter 16, verse 12. He, there was multiple beings with his disciples over these 40 days post-resurrection. I just, I don't think I really need to prove it to this God. I think you can read uh, uh, Lee Strobel's book on the case for Christ, or you can find other literature. But, but when you uh, when you give your birth date, you are you you are validating the the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You are validating that 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 Jesus rose from the dead. When you put on a calendar in the year of our Lord, 2023, then you are again validating that, that, that Jesus Christ is the risen Savior, that, that he rose from the dead. We can could, we could go on through the list. The, the number that saw Jesus post-resurrection runs somewhere in about 900 people that saw Jesus post-resurrection. So it wasn't just one. It wasn't the, just the disciples. It was 900 people. Let me say it this way. King, is it Charles is the new king of, of England? Is that correct? Let me try it again. Y'all been watching the news. Is Charles the new king of England? Yes. Well, he would want to know that. I'm sure he would have said that. <laughs> Let's suppose I said to you uh, that I was in West Town Hall, and I, I went to the Apple store, and King Charles was in there. You would say to, my, to, say to me, you're, you're nuts, Pastor. It may have looked like Charles, but Charles wouldn't go to the Apple store and West Town Hall. That's totally ridiculous. Well, let's suppose somebody came into church today and said, hey, you know what? I saw King Charles over at the, at the food court. He was, he was at the West Town Mall. He was, he was getting one of those great looking pretzels. You know what I'm talking about? And, and he, he loves those pretzels. And, and then somebody else came in and said, hey, I saw King Charles. He was, he, he was at, at, at the, the, another store. And we went to the food court and, and King Charles had stopped for a little pizza. And King Charles had stopped for a little pretzel. And King Charles had stopped for a little lasagna. And King Charles, are you hungry yet? <laughs> you would say that the probability of King Charles being at the West Ham Mall was pretty good. Because 900 people saw him. When we look at the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the proof is there. I don't think you're here this morning because you don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus. Again, a third of the world. But that's just looking at the resurrection just in a very black and white, one-dimensional way. It's kind of ridiculous to stay there. And dwell there in, 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 in looking at the proof. The next thing we need to look at is, is the promise of the resurrection that Jesus will resurrect me. The, the promise of the resurrection. He, he, he wants to give me eternal life. Not only did he prove that it was possible, but he proved that it, he offers it to you and to me. I don't know about you, but, but I never go to a funeral, but when I think to myself, I, I, I never pass a casket where I say to myself, I, I'll see you later. I never say goodbye. I don't believe 
that if they're a born again believer, then I believe that, they, that I will see them in heaven. I believe in the resurrection that Jesus promised, that he said to his disciples, and he said in his word, and he says to you and I, that I am the resurrection, John chapter 11, verse 25. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live again. That's the promise. Not the proof, that's the promise of the resurrection. That's the second dimension of, of Resurrection Sunday. That's the second dimension of Easter. That's quite a promise. If, 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 if Jesus hadn't died and been resurrected, then we, you and I, would not have hope. We would remain hopeless. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will also raise me. This is what he says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 36. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Jesus was saying, Peter was saying, I won't disappoint. There are a lot of disappointments in life, but this will not be a disappointment that he's going to resurrect the believer. This is what he says in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. This expectation will not disappoint, for we know how dearly God loves us. The first dimension of Easter or the resurrection is factual. It's black and white, if you will. It's a real event. It's not a legend, not a myth. Tons of eyewitnesses, tons of historians that validate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The second dimension is eternal. It is the future promise that if you seek Jesus Christ as your Savior, that you too will be resurrected that you too can make heaven home. But the third dimension of Easter is transformational. It's transformation. It will change your life. It's the, the power, the power of the resurrection to offer his Holy Spirit every day. I hope you can get a hold of this. Most people even believers maybe struggle with this issue of getting this third dimension. This power of the resurrection working in our daily lives. Living in the power of the resurrection. It's kind of interesting to me as an observer of people, there is such a level of frustration in our world that I've never seen before in my lifetime. I mean, it's all kinds of different frustrations. You can watch those frustrations at Walmart or Target. You can look at the frustration in traffic. You can watch people's body language. Is this as if the world is filled? Some would blame it on COVID, and maybe so. Some would blame it on media, and maybe so. Some would blame it on, on just being glued to your cell phone. Maybe that's true too. I, I don't know. But but I know this: you and I will not live the life Christ meant for us to live unless we live in the power of the resurrection. That our lives will be frustrated. That our lives will be filled with fear. That our lives will be filled with fatigue. There's a fair amount of people that just are at the end of themselves. Can barely hang on. Filled with fatigue and some with failure. Because they're trying to live this life in their own strength. You were meant to live this life in your strength and in your power. You were created as a vessel of the Holy Spirit for God 
to be a part of your life, for the Holy Spirit to involve your life, that he might give you strength, that he might give you power, that he might give you courage. Listen to what Paul said to the church at Ephesus, chapter 3, verse 19 and 20. May you experience the love of Christ through, though it is so great, you'll never fully understand it. Then you'll be filled with the fullness of life and power, and power that comes from God by His mighty power at work within us. He is able to accomplish infinitely more than we can ever dare to ask or hope. What is He saying? He's saying you're going to need the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to need the power of the resurrection. That is not some historical event in the past. It's not some future event in the resurrection. It is about daily living our lives in the power of the resurrection. It's experiencing the resurrection. It's not watching it on black and white. It's not being entertained with it in color. It's feeling. It's knowing. It's experiencing the power of the resurrection today in our lives. It's getting up in the morning and going to work with the power of the resurrection in our lives. We live in the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We feel completely loved by Christ. If I were to pull this, this crowd, and if, I, if I were to get letters from those that are listening, there would be a number of people that would say to me, I don't feel loved. It would come in all kinds of different venues, or it would be stressed in all kinds of different ways. That would simply say, I don't feel love. It's almost universal. But the gospel says that you may experience the love of Christ, though it is so great you'll never fully understand it, then you'll be filled with the fullness of life. That the love of God is shed abroad in our lives and we experience the love of Christ. We experience the blessing of Christ. We experience and we know. Sometimes as a pastor, I, I, I think to myself, I don't know if I can communicate this. I remember talking to a, 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 an older gentleman and he, he, was, he was struggling. He, he liked me. But he was a little confrontational, you know, just a little grumpy. He said, how do you know you're going to be go to heaven when you die? How do you know you're saved? And again, he was just a little bite. And I said, no, I can't explain it. It would be like explaining what a rainbow looks like to a blind man. Kind of explaining all the hues as the color kind of pulls together. I don't know if I can explain that or not. I'm not sure I can explain to someone that is deaf and had never heard before in their life what an orchestra sounds like. The beauty of the strings and the trumpet. Wasn't the trumpet great this morning? The, the beauty of the 88 strings of an instrument. The beauty of the vocals. The beauty. How could I ever explain the, the, the beauty of music to someone that had it? That's how I feel with the pastor sometimes. How do I explain the love of Christ that shed abroad in our lives? That this missing something in our lives can't be explained by other things other than we need Jesus, the power of the resurrection. He says, he says that you may experience the love of Christ through the great love, you'll, though you'll never fully understand it, and then you'll be filled with the fullness of life. And then he says, you'll experience God's power in your life. You don't have to do it on your own anymore. You don't have to live life on your own strength anymore. You don't have to live life in your own power anymore. But you experience the resurrected Savior, the, the power of the resurrection in your life. And the Bible says, and you accomplish infinitely more than you've ever dreamed. To be honest. For most of us, and even in the church, this concept of living in the power of the resurrection gets lost. This concept, this reality of living in the 
and the grace of God is missed because we try everything else. We know ourselves. We entertain ourselves. We busy ourselves. Other than looking to the Creator, the one that can energize our lives. So how do I get that benefit? Number one, I accept his proof. The proof of the gospel. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Sometimes even clergy make the gospel of Jesus Christ too complicated. Finding Jesus is as simple as ABC. It's, it's a matter of accepting Jesus Christ. Confessing with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Then you believe his promise, John chapter 3, verse 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins. You and I can't do it on our own. You'll never be good enough. We need the grace of God, the blood of Jesus Christ. And then we count on His power. We count on His power. Let me sum it up a little bit with 2 Corinthians chapter 1. It's the apostle Paul. And I think he probably sums it well. He says, I think you ought to know about the hard time we went through in Asia. We were really crushed and overwhelmed and feared we'd never live through. We felt we were doomed to die and saw how powerless we were to help ourselves. And then Paul said, but that was good. For then we put everything into the hands of God, who alone could save us. For he can even raise the dead. And he did help us and saved us. And we expect him to do it again and again. Did you catch what the Apostle Paul was saying? The Apostle Paul was saying that, that he went through difficult times. You're talking about the guy that had been shipwrecked. You're talking about the guy that had, 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 had been snaked. You're talking about the guy that had, had multiple problems and, and multiple arming. And, and, and several times he prayed that, that God would deliver him from the, the, the ailment. I think he was blind. But in all that, he says, but all that was good. For then we put everything into the hands of God. You have a choice. Life sends a lot of curveballs. There's a lot of difficult moments and days and weeks and years even sometimes. You can be frustrated, angry. You can be overwhelmed. Or you can give it over to Jesus. You can find it the resurrected power of the Holy Spirit working in your life. Not just for eternity, but today. Today you can give it to Jesus. Today you can say, Lord, I don't know what you're doing in my life. And I don't know how to, to navigate through all this. But Jesus, I trust you.
relationships of my life. If you can be the resurrected Savior, and if you have power over death and dying, then I would experience your power in my life. Dottie Rainbow was a, a wonderful gospel writer, but if you look at her life, it was filled with tragedy. I think early on in her life, she, she was from a family of, uh, of country singers, and she decided to go with gospel, and her dad said, if you're going to go with gospel, then you have to get out of my house, so she basically had to leave home. I think I read somewhere around 12, and about 16, she got married. There was tons of heartache in her life. You have got to go back and, and look at it. But man, did she ever write some wonderful songs? Powerful path. She, she married a, a rainbow, and, and they, they began to do like evangelism and, and would do concerts and would sing Southern gospel music all over the country. They got back from a meeting, and when they got back from a meeting, she went to see her brother who was in the hospital. He said, since I'm dying. And she said, I hadn't seen him this bad in a long time, and he was dying. She said, I, I begged him. His name was Eddie Mitchell. And said, Eddie, get right with God. Make heaven whole. Do the will of God. He looked up at him and said, sis. Sis, I, I, I've, I've, I've been too bad. I, I'll never make it to heaven. She had started writing a song prior to that on the, on the grace of God. The next time she saw him, said the same thing, oh, Eddie, get right with God. I want to see you in heaven. And it was the same story. Sis, you don't know all the things that, that I've done in my life. And, and she said, of course, I knew he'd been in jail. And of course, I knew that he'd been on drugs and alcohol. I, of course, I knew all of those things. But I also knew that the power of the resurrection, that God could do something in his life. They had a meeting in Ohio. She and her husband. So uh, they went to Ohio. They had their services. Uh, and at the end of the service, uh, toward the end of the service, Dottie Rainbow said to the congregation, she said, uh, I want you to pray for my brother Eddie. I want him to get saved. I want him to know the power of the resurrection. And she said that church didn't pause. They just stopped. And she said, and heaven and earth came together. They began to pray. And God began to move. And something happened. And she said, I knew. I knew God had done something at 1130 in the morning. That's the power of the resurrection. Amen. She said, we finished the meeting. I finished my song. I wanted my brother to know. That Jesus would cleanse him and fill him, and he could make heaven home. He said, I went and I got home that night, went to the hospital to see Harry, and he said, When I got to the bed, he was very weak. She kind of kind of motioned for her to, to lean in. She put her ear close to his mouth, and he said, Sis, at eleven thirty, I gave my life to Jesus. Then he said, "Sis, I'll meet you in heaven." The power. not just a historical event to prove it. It's not just to be resurrected or be died. It's the hope that we have. It's experiencing the power of the resurrection here and now. Today, this week, in our lives, and he soon passed she would publish her song he looked beyond my faults and he saw 
for my needs. That's the experience of the best friend. That's experiencing it now. Not only in Eddie's life, but in Dottie Rainbow's life. Knowing that God answers prayer. And knowing that God moves, sensing the power of the resurrection. Shall we pray, Father? In these few moments that we have together, thank you. Thank you for the hope that we have. And Father, for that one who came this morning frustrated, angry, for that one that's struggling over things in their life they didn't think they would ever have to deal with, for that one more that just can't get it, just can't get it sink, would you let them know and experience the power of the resurrection? And would you help us all we call to look to you and know God is with us? Thank you, Jesus, that you look beyond our our need and you see our need.
to be able to give him a love offering, right? And make sure that he, that he gets his job done, his work done, with the group that he's worked with, Young Life. Thank you, Father, for the power of the resurrection. And so, Jesus, help us to experience it today, tomorrow, when it gets overwhelming. Help us to look to you and to know that God is his word. That you can take our load. That you can bear our burden. That we weren't intended to live on our own strength. So Holy Spirit of God, I just ask that you dismiss us with your power and with your presence. And would we not only see the resurrection in black and white and see the resurrection in, in color and realize that we're going to be resurrected someday, but may we experience the power, the power of the resurrection working in our lives today. Watch over